Hello everyone! Welcome to the Modern Shaman's video question and answer time. I'm Rachel Kirkland, the Modern Shaman, and if you are new to our channel, I always welcome you and say if you're interested in this type of metaphysical work, uh, spiritual and psychic phenomenon, feel free to connect with me for a personal session. All of that information is on my website at themodernshaman.net as well as if you want to train, develop your psychic senses, get a sense of strengthening the gifts that you already feel like you have, look into my classes. There's so much great information that I just developed as curriculum over the years because I needed it as I was someone born into these types of gifts and uh, psychic connections and then had to figure out how to balance it with uh, the regular waking world and how to integrate those aspects of connection. So it's a phenomenal curriculum. I really believe in it and um, have developed it over my years uh, just living and also working as a psychic and shaman. So. Lots of info there. Again, just go to the website, themodernshaman.net, and you can find further information if you're interested in that. Okay, so here's the question for the week. Oh, there's two questions in here because they were similar in nature. So, I'll read them both. The first one says, Hi, I've been really enjoying your content and your vibe. It's refreshing to hear, with, hear it all with a positive, upbeat perspective rather than the fear that I see a lot. I would love to hear your perspective on false light. What I'm finding is fear-based and not really my thing. I thought I would throw my question into the hat. Lots and lots of love. Your question's been thrown in and I picked it out. <laughs> okay, and then here's the second question. It says, hi Rachel, I have a question for one of your YouTube videos. I have recently learned of healers that I have respected doing some dark slash abusive things to their clients. I know this has been the case throughout history and I'm wondering how one reconciles the light with the dark in these cases. I don't believe because they have done abusive things that their healings and gifts are all false, but I'm feeling conflicted about what to believe. I'm wondering what you and spirit have to say about the balance of light and dark. Thank you. Okay, so these are both biggies, right? This is some deep stuff. Um, not cerebral, not mental. This is getting to the heart of things that make us human, right? Polaric experience, light and dark, suffering and joy, uh, expansion and contraction, contrast of this human life. So we're going to dive in. <laughs> I will say, I just, I guess I, I want to have this preface or this reminder that even when I'm sharing and on all of these videos, it's always from my perspective, from my personal experience and my knowing and my connection, uh, from a personal perspective. It's not universal truth, right? It's not like Rachel knows all and all hail Rachel. It's the opposite of that. I want you to be sure that there's a sense of personal discernment, alignment, knowing what the voice of truth sounds like for you, your sense of higher guidance and validating that even above what I say. So if something you hear doesn't resonate with you, that's important to pay attention to, okay? You don't... <laughs> I had a theology professor when I was getting my master's used to use this phrase. He was from Kenya. I loved him to death. And he, um, he used to say, eat the chicken and throw out the bones. And I always loved that phrase. It stuck with me because it, it was, it's pretty much... A metaphor for resonance, right? Things that really resonate with us and we're like, yes, and things that we're like, ain't, ain't for me, okay? Not vibing with that. But 
we have to pay attention to that inner voice. And especially, I feel like it's relevant when you ask that first question of saying that the things that you have read before or that, that are out there, and there's so much out there, you guys. Everything's out there and accessible now, you know, through the internet. So really paying attention to your own resonance, to your own subtle energy that you're receiving from things that you're reading that feel in harmony with you and that don't feel in harmony with you, validating your own inner alignment and following through with that is, is primary and paramount to your own sense of peace uh, and guidance throughout your life experience. All right, so there is a lot of things out there, especially within the spiritual community, religious communities. I think over the history of humankind, a lot of the basics of the way we were taught was very um, primal in nature, very childish in nature. And so fear tactics, uh, pain tactics, things like this were used to <laughs> explain things of the light, even the way that some religions would talk about God or talk about the relationship with God was very punishment-based, very childish the way that you would talk to a toddler, right? Or try to keep them from putting their finger in a light socket. It, it, you know, there's pain there, there's pain there, pain there. And a lot of uh, even electroshock therapy and these things like this that are usage of pain and fear and these personal triggers in order to psychologically try to train you in something positive. It's very dysfunctional. <laughs> it's totally backwards, right? But through a long time of our human history, that's been done. In some way, shape, and form, places are still doing it. Military tactics are still doing it. Or you know, animal training, sometimes there's sometimes that where they're still kind of doing that shock uh, training to get you to move to something positive by almost creating a fear or the inducement of fear to stay away from certain things. There's a balance with that and you have to pay attention to your own sense of resonance above all of the other things. These kind of questions really dive into the heart, okay? You can't look at these things from a mental or cognitive space. And oftentimes these ideas of saying this is false light or someone, you know, it's, it's a devil pretending to be an angel and all of these types of things really just create chaos, mistrust, and a sense of misalignment within your own self, okay? So instead of listening to all of the guidance from the outside like this, like people telling you this, this, this is true, this is, and I realize I'm one of these people, so this is why I first said pay attention to your resonance with what I'm saying. But there's just so much information out there even within, you know, there's like these, oh, spiritual hierarchical face, uh, false matrices of light and false, I mean, you can just look up all sorts of things. It's all out there, all right? And they all get really detailed and you can just feel like, oh my gosh, it's this sense of paranoia and confusion. That to me does not resonate. It never has. In fact, that to me feels like it creates more chaos, separation, and confusion when true knowledge, true wisdom, should have a sense of uh, solidity to it. It should feel like it, there's a coming together, there's a oneness, there's a sync, there is a harmony of essence, of light, of knowledge that feels like wisdom, higher knowing. The kind of lower chaotic stuff that's confusing and distracting, it feels like noise and it doesn't give you a sense of peace. This is how, for me, I have a sense of discernment. I notice these things don't make me feel better. In fact, they make me feel more confused, more lost, more like I don't know what's going on and I gotta listen to everybody else to figure it out. This is 
separate <laughs> energy, again, creating a sense of chaos, paranoia, and external, um, looking to externals to gain a sense of wisdom, when it truly should have that space of discernment that feels very peace-giving, very aligning, like something in you just, just with a sense of ease says, yes, this is true for me. I resonate with this. There's peace in it. Now, I'm not a big fan, y'all know me, I'm not a big fan of labels, and when I hear these, this label of like false light, and if people have brought it up before in sessions and asked about it, I don't really feel like it's, it's necessarily false, I just feel like there's a spectrum to light, okay? Just like our visual light spectrum, right? That has a sense of fading into certain colors, and then uh, fading out of other colors. There is a field of energy within the light spectrum that at, at certain areas has way more luminance or a higher frequency and vibration towards luminance. And so it's a purer form of light and it's less diffused. It's a, it's, uh, there's not as much gunk or just fogginess and density that it's being processed through. Instead, it's very pure, transparent, translucent light that has that pure, high vibrational frequency, okay? And to me, that's on the high end of the spectrum. Now, when you get into the lower end of the spectrum of light, it's not that it's false, it's still light, it's a form of light, but there may be manipulation in it, there may be some distortion to it in terms of the, like if I'm thinking of a light wave, right? It may have some noise added into it in terms of frequency or counter, um, counter waves that create a sense of interference or confusion or distortion to the bending of the light, right? So if we look at it in those terms, it's still light, but it's just distorted or shifted forms of light. Now this happens when we have trauma, fears, chaos, things that we're processing that may seem dark or dense or heavy. And as our chakras are spinning and creating, say, this auric field or this field of light, our energetic body, sometimes they have to process through this gunk. If you're human and you're still manifesting a form and body, you're processing through some levels of duality, just being here, okay? Now, this is getting higher and higher in vibrational resonance, but you're still having to process through that on some level. And so, when those chakras get kind of gunky and muddy in certain ways, then the light that comes out may process through in a sort of false light. It's not false, it's just a distorted or a mal, mal like it's just a bending of the light or a darker or a muddier diffused sort of light that would have a sort of like fog or bending to it, all right? So it doesn't mean it's not light. It's just not that pure translucent sense of high frequency, okay? And we all have those areas that we're trying to process and clear out and grow through. It's part of our evolutionary growth as a light being, okay? Okay, let's get on to question two. So that second question is more like what do we do then as humans that are still living and experiencing others with their own play of this balancing of light and dark within themselves as well as the collective of humanity. And this is, um, like I said, it's a biggie. It gets to the heart. I will say... Through my own experience with clients and those that I've worked with that have been what society would consider going through dark events or going through trauma that involves, um, you know, them on the wrong side of the tracks, you know, having worked with all sorts of different people. Um, and seeing all sorts of different things that would be considered difficult for most people to process. I will say that our, our earth 
has more light on it now, despite what we're thinking or we're seeing as on the news, so, so to say. There's more light that's coming in that's bringing up so much of the things that were hidden in the dark before, that were just swept under the rug. So in a way, if we can remember that these events, when we find out something about someone and or we hear something that someone gets arrested for an event or things like this, it's actually a coming into the light a bringing into the light and those events for those individuals are extremely catalytic in the energetic field, meaning they completely shift the energy and trajectory that that person was on. So when they are convicted of something or caught or um, something is brought up into the light where this was a skeleton that was hid in the closet and now the skeleton's out, there is a sense that their life will never be the same and it literally shifts that karmic energy that dark dense directly into the light so in a way it's extremely positive for the shifting of that momentum and track that they were on and it like night and day it moves them into a place of awareness of responsibility of um, just a higher vibrational deal of processing. It moves the event instead of hiding and keeping in that pattern. Now it moves into the healing dynamic, which must be processed. It must be dealt with. It must be faced. No matter how long that takes, it, it sh literally, it shifts it directly in that moment when the light is brought onto it. So our society has been going through so many of these things where things are being brought to the light. And to many of us as observers, they seem really uh, abrasive, right? Like a baby taking his first breath or when you come out of the door and it's cold out there and you, <gasps> it feels abrasive and cold and brisk in the lungs. It's a shock to the system, okay? But at the same time, for that individual, the shift in energy is completely changed from the track that they were on to begin with. So it's a quick moving, ending, and catalytic event to clear the path that they were on, okay? And they're given, like I said, the momentum directly into healing, processing. It's a totally different modality then that they're moved into in terms of energy, okay? Um, so in a way, if we can remember that as humanity, that when we get this shock coming in that seems like, oh my gosh, this is so dark and I thought these things were light. It's not that they're not light. There's just a variance, a spectrum to that sense of luminance within them. And there may have been areas, just like there are in us, that are pockets of really uh, kind of hardened or cavernous areas or solidified kind of coal that have to be cleaned out. Those moments of cleaning out can feel very abrasive, but they are huge shifts in humankind, in the direction that we were going, the direction that they were going. So in a way, it's so good that these things are coming to the light to be brought out and shifted and changed. So stay in that momentum of knowing that every time something is brought up like this, there is purification, there is healing, there is cleansing for humankind as well as for that individual because they're helping process that also for any vibrational alignments of others that are going through similar experiences as a human. So in a way it's incredibly positive and to send them the energy of compassion, of, of moving through the progression of healing. Now, how do I heal with this? How do I heal through shame? How do I heal through um, responsibility and acceptance and heal through these larger energies of love? Love is an absorbent energy. It doesn't separate out and blame. Okay, so we, we pull in, we grow through. We have a sense of responsibility and depth to our growth through those types of experiences. So if you can stay in that space of the heart, not the head, coming to a space of awareness within that spectrum of light and luminance and just knowing that as these things are brought up, they're also clearing and purifying 
in a, in a very positive way for all of us. Mm. Love you guys. Blessings.